Good afternoon and welcome to uh, the Making a PG Application to SOAS. My name is Laura Hayes and I'm from the International Office here at SOAS. So today's webinar, what we're going to go through is making an application. Uh, I'll give you a brief introduction to SOAS, just a bit of information about the school, the programmes that we have on offer, including entry requirements, and then we'll go through how to make an application, including the documents which are required, uh, for example, a supporting statement, academic references, and so on. Uh, then I'll go through what happens next in the process. There will be... Um, I will be answering questions towards the end of the webinar, so please do uh, do write in your questions now and I will answer them towards the end. So SOAS, we are the School of Oriental and African Studies, part of the University of London. The school was set up uh, in 1916 as very much a training ground for the diplomatic service. So we're very uh, well known for subject areas such as politics, international relations, law and so on. The school is, is the largest school in Europe which specialises entirely in the study of Asia, Africa and the Middle East. So we offer an unmatched combination of broad global subjects and specialist regional classes. We also offer small group teaching. So for example, on average, SOAS classes have 11 students to every one member of staff, which is quite unusual for um, universities in the UK especially. Our teaching quality is consistently rated of a very high level. For example, in the 2016 National Student Survey, we were rated number one in terms of our teaching quality. Our regional expertise is, is, is currently obviously in areas where, where changes are taking place in the world, um, which makes our staff and our students highly employable. The school is unique and distinctive. We're a very international school uh, with nearly 50% of our students from overseas. And the SOAS Library, for example, um, is a very well regarded facility. Uh, it's one of the world's most important academic libraries for the study of Asia, Africa, and the Middle East. It, tra it attracts scholars from all over the world, and there are over 1.3 million volumes. As a SOAS student, you also have access to the University of London Library and the other libraries uh, that are part of the University of London. So that includes UCL, for example, King's College, LSC, and so on. So SOAS is a fairly small school by UK standards. We have just over 5,000 students on campus. Uh, half of the students are actually studying for a master's or a PhD programme, and the other half are undergraduate. SOAS is a, is a very international university, as I mentioned previously. Uh, we are probably one of the most international universities in the UK, with nearly with over 50% of our students from overseas. And we're very lucky at SOAS to welcome students from over 140 different countries. I think it goes without um, saying that you're guaranteed to be in a class of students with at least a minimum of eight to 10 different nationalities. So, so many opportunities to meet and work with students from all around the world. Just to give you an update about our academic staff. Now, uh, SOAS academic staff are experts in the media. They're often called upon uh, for new, to, to report upon current events in the world on CNN, for example, the BBC. Uh, on average, SOAS academics appear in the media 80 times per month. Uh, for example, one of our academics from politics has recently appeared on BBC News Channel uh, reporting on discussing US politics and Trump's first year. Um, we have a number of academics who regularly appear on Al Jazeera, plus also writing um, reports for various newspapers and so on. So this gives us very much a global reach, a global appeal. Uh, raising our profile, obviously, in countries around the world. We're based in central London, so I don't know how many of you are familiar with the city. We're in an ideal location. Uh, the area where we're located is called Bloomsbury, and it's very much the heart of the University of London. Uh, so we're about a 10-minute walk from other colleges, such as King's, LSC, and also very close to UCL. The school is uh, located uh, about a two minute walk from the British Museum. Um, it's a very pleasant environment in which to study. It's made up of beautiful squares 
Uh, it's a very green, pretty environment. We're also very close to areas such as Oxford Street and also Covent Garden. So if you're looking to obviously study in London, uh, SOAS is an ideal location. And we do have our accommodation, which is located near King's Cross Station, uh, which is about a 15 minute walk from the main campus. So looking to study a taught master's programme at SOAS. So we offer over 200 taught master's programmes. Uh, now, the majority of programmes will be for one year, uh, which makes the UK a very attractive study destination for master's programmes. Students are actually enrolled for the full academic year, so that's from September through to the following September. And we only have currently at SOAS one intake, which is in September, so we don't have a January intake. The range of degree programmes, obviously, they're fully available on our website. Uh, SOAS does pride itself on interdisciplinary study. So we have a number of master's, master's degrees that focus on particular regions, and they allow students to take courses across the SOAS departments. So, it's, so there's a lot of flexibility within our degree programs to make up your own sort of uh, personal, um, to direct your own area of study. So for example, if you were interested in the Middle East, there's opportunities to take Middle Eastern studies and make up a programme that covers areas such as politics, language, culture, music, and so on. So to, to have that in, interdisciplinary approach is very much part of the SOAS uh, way of teaching and thinking. There's lots of linkages uh, across our different departments as well. Uh, so you'll get exposure to different uh, disciplines. The, uh, the one-year master's programme is obviously a fully internationally recognised qualification. It's recognised across the world to go on to further PhD studies. So different to other countries around the world that offer two years master's programmes, the UK offers the one-year master's, which is fully acceptable around the world, particularly if you want to go on to further academic studies. In terms of the structure of most of the uh, taught master's programmes, so usually students will choose a range of between four to six modules. Now there are core modules which students do have to take, but there's also the opportunity to take optional course units. Um, and again, please do refer to either the, uh, the website or the postgraduate prospectus to see the full list of actual course modules available. Now, also within the, the postgraduate masters, you will be um, expected to write a 10,000 word dissertation. Um, and the dissertation, students start to think about their dis dissertation as soon as they enroll on the program. Um, however, most students will probably write up the dissertation during the summer period, as classes will finish uh, at the end of May when exams take place. So this gives you an indication of SOAS departments. As you see, we have a range of departments focusing on the social sciences, law, arts, humanities, and languages and cultures. In terms of entry requirements for our master's programme, so we're looking for students with a minimum of a 2-1 from a UK university or equivalent. Uh, this tends to equate, of, uh, equate to a GPA of 3.3 out of 4 in the US system, for example. Obviously, we're very familiar with other international qualifications. There is a full list on our website and also on our country pages. Um, but we are obviously very familiar with welcoming students from around the world. And please, if you do, um, if you want to get in touch with any of the international officers, they will be able to tell you firsthand what the actual entry, minimum entry requirement is from your country. The online application opens on the 1st of November and there is no application fee. And the deadline for applications is the end of June. However, we do encourage students to make an earlier application. Most we, we do uh, run a rolling system of making offers, so we will start making offers as soon as we receive the applications in November. Some courses will fill up and we would recommend that all students try and make their application really by the no later than March or April. This is particularly important for those of you applying from overseas when you, if a visa is required as the whole process does take time and you want to be able to have time towards the, 
in order to apply for your uh, visa process. There is a £1,000 deposit required now to confer, which will be, which needs to be paid on confirmation of your offer. So looking at our English language requirements, um, as you can see from the slide, in terms of IELTS, we're looking for an overall score of 6.5, uh, with a 6.5 score in writing. We do also accept uh, TOEFL. Uh, currently, we're looking for an overall score of 100 and a minimum 23 score in writing. So that's the internet-based um, test. In terms of, um, we do offer pre-sessionals at SOAS. So for students who perhaps don't make the, the, the requirement of 6.5 overall, we do have a series of four, eight, and 12-week pre-sessional programs. Um, and obviously, when you make your application, we will then uh, discuss and let you know about the requirements which are, are, are suitable to you. We do also offer in-sessional programs. So for some students, a condition of their offer will be to, to attend an in-sessional. And this is really a, a series of lectures which take place during your time at SOAS uh, to help with your English language uh, program. So how to apply? So as I mentioned, the application is now all online. The application itself is fairly straightforward. Uh, and it's fairly straightforward. What is required, um, obviously, is the supporting statement. And this is what sort of differentiates you out from other candidates. This is the only opportunity you'll have uh, to um, tell us about your interest in studying for the programme. We don't interview students anymore. Uh, so this is your one chance to really make an impact on the admissions tutor. So the supporting statement needs to be no more than a thousand words. And this is really where we, we make a decision on whether the course that you've applied for is suitable for you. So within this, the supporting statement, you need to really highlight your suitability for your chosen program. It's all, always helpful in this supporting statement to indicate perhaps the area of study in which you want to pursue. So perhaps you want to identify particular course modules that you're interested in, in studying at SOAS. But within the supporting statement, you need to cover your skills, motivations, and relevant experiences towards the chosen program. It's also interesting for us if you highlight your ambitions and interests, uh, what you intend to do after studying at SOAS, your career aspirations, and so on. But it really is key to make sure that the supporting statement is very much geared towards the program you're studying, you've applied to study at SOAS. Uh, you can include an up-to-date CV, um, ensure there are no gaps in between dates. Um, again, the CV needs to be no longer than two sides of, of type day four. In terms of your academic transcripts, if you haven't obviously completed your, your bachelor's degree, um, you obviously don't need to send these in yet. If you, if you have completed your, your uh, degree, then please do send your uh, transcript, your certificate. And we do want the original transcript or certificate. Now, this can either be stamped by the university and uh, scanned and sent to us, uh, updated onto the application form, or you can um, send it to us by post, okay? Um, if you have graduated, then we do require the official degree certificate. And again, as I said, this can either be scanned and emailed to us or sent by post. Uh, we do require two academic references. Now, if you've graduated less than, less than, less than three years ago, uh, we will require two academic two academic references from your uh, current or most recent place of study. If you've been out of education for more than three years, we can consider earlier academic references as long as they are relevant to the programme you're applying for. And we will also accept professional references, but only for those of you who, who have been out of academic study for more than three years. So ideally, references need to be submitted through the application system. 
which means uh, submitted electronically. From your academic references, you need to add in their name and also their email address. We won't accept email accounts such as Yahoo, Hotmail or Gmail, so we're looking for obviously academic email addresses. So you need to add in the name and the email address of your referee and then we contact the referee and ask them to send uh, your reference. So do approach your referees beforehand, make, give them some warning that SOAS will be contacting them for a, re for a reference. And this is important because often the, the whole process can slow down because we're chasing referees, references. So do please obviously make your uh, referee aware that they will be expecting an email from SOAS to, to send in a reference. Now, in some cases, we will accept if it's difficult for your um, referee to send an email reference, we will accept a hard copy. And again, this can be scanned and emailed to us or sent in by the post. However, the reference does need to be written on headed paper. Um, and the postal address, all, all of these uh, details are, are available online. In terms of um, English language proficiency, now this can be submitted at a later date. Uh, we only accept IELTS results in IBT within two years, so you have to have taken your IELTS to prior two years to making your application. Uh, this can either, again, be scanned or sent to us in the post. But as I said, during the, when you make the application, you don't need to include this. This can uh, be sent in at a later date. Um, obviously, uh, many students haven't actually taken their IELTS or TOEFL tests when they make their application to SOAS. So what happens next? Once we've received the application, on average, we take four to six weeks uh, to make a decision and reply back to you. So as mentioned, the sorts of things that will hold up a decision are waiting for references, um, perhaps the support, you know, other sort of technical issues might also hold up the application. Uh, but on average, uh, we take four to six weeks to, to make a decision. Uh, the offer we make you will either obviously be unconditional if we've decided that we'd like to make you a place, you've completed university, you meet the minimum entry requirements, and if you have the required English language level, then the offer would be unconditional. However, if you're still waiting to complete your degree and you don't have the required English language requirements, then the offer will be conditional. Um, and this, the offer will be emailed to you. And if the offer is condition, conditional, then we will highlight the conditions and the requirements uh, that are needed. So you decide whether to accept or decline the offer. If you decide to accept the offer from SOAS, we then require the £1,000 uh, deposit. Now, for those of you who require a visa to study in the UK, we can only uh, submit, you need to t tell us that you need, need the visa, and this is called a CAS request. And in order to to obtain the CAS, you need to have an unconditional offer from SOAS. And you can only apply for the visa three months prior to starting at SOAS. So this is very much, this gives an example of very much why, you know, applying by the end of March is really the, the sort of the deadline because it can take up to sort of four to six weeks to receive an answer from SOAS. And then you need to obviously get your transcripts together and then apply for your CAS, the CAS request. And this, again, can take some time. And you, you can only apply for the visa three months prior. So once, um, once, uh, once you've received your offer, the offer's gone, you, you would then send us your transcripts, your English language uh, information. We would then uh, send, you can then send your CAS request, we will send you a CAS and you can go off and apply for your visa. And then enrolment information will follow during the summer period. So if you have any further questions, please do uh, contact the Masters and Admissions team directly. There's the website available. Please do also uh, contact international officers directly uh, and our details are available on the web page. Thank you.